Corel Painter Essential 7. We announced the product last Tuesday on October 8th, and we will be shipping the product um, very soon here. So on the 18th is our first ship date. And this is all just the basic information for you. We have not changed the pricing of the product in the U.S. It's $49.99. Um, although we don't offer an upgrade path from previous versions of Essentials, what we are offering for current Essentials customers is a brush pack bundle that's worth $199. And the brush packs were new in Painter Essentials 6. So if you're on an earlier version than that, there's all kinds of exciting stuff for you to take advantage of because you can now import in additional brush packs. And as always, the software is both Mac and Windows. Um, so I am on a MacBook Pro today, and I'm running Boot Camp so that I can have both Windows and Mac when I need to. You guys can do that as well. You get both with one license. In regards of what is new, you probably have been clued in a little bit since the product has been out for about a week here, a little over a week. Um, but one of the most exciting new things is our artificial intelligence-based photo painting. And I'm going to walk you through pretty much every detail of this and show you quite a few of the styles today and how to use them in creative and unique ways. Um, as far as the new brush technology, we have three brand new brush categories that we brought into Essential 7. There's dab stencils, dynamic speckles, and glazing, full brush categories with numerous variants. With digital watercolor, I'm going to show you how you have more flexibility with the control of how the watercolor will soak into your canvas texture. We have some new options up on the property bar. And then for those of you that happen to like the image hose, there was only one nozzle in the previous version of the product. This time around, we have a full library to work with. And I'll try and show you some creative ways that you can use the hoses as well. And then the interface overhaul. So we have a nice, dark, sleek UI. All of the app icons, the brush visuals, they've all been updated. So much better now. It's going to make it easier to identify things um, and hopefully eliminate the need to do any test brush strokes because you can see right away what the brushes look like. There's scrubby zoom. There's updated property bars, um, enhanced color selection, and I will be using that throughout the entire session. And you should experience amazing performance because everything that we put into Essentials is hand-selected from our pro products specifically for beginners, um, but a lot of those performance enhancements also get put into Essential 7. So with the artificial intelligence photo painting, if any of you had done photo painting in the past, we have some preset styles. Well, now we've got eight new AI styles, and you'll find them all on the top of the stack. And I'm going to run you through, as I mentioned, quite a wide variety of these today. And although you can accomplish a beautiful painting in one click, you don't have to stop there because you can dip your brush into the painting and you can add your own hand-hewn touch. We can also add all kinds of effects um, to the painting once it's completed. And I'll show you those today as well. So let's go ahead and hop out of the slideshow here. And I'd like to begin by just doing a real quick review of Painter Essentials 6, because the UI is so drastically different. If anyone had not um, seen Essentials 6, or if you're on an earlier version, um, it's going to be very evident the changes. But the first thing that I notice when I look at 6, which is what you see on the screen here, is the light UI. So we have the light skin, um, all of the icons in the toolbar, they're not super crisp and clear. We've, we've enhanced that. We've changed the highlight. Everything's nice and dark. If we come up to the brush selector, as you select a category on the left, if you want to see what the brush variant looks like, you need to come over and hover over each one of the variants. And then down on the bottom here, you get a stroke, a stroke and a dab preview. So this wasn't the smoothest workflow, um, nor were these dab and strokes really representative of what the brushes can do. So we've given you much nicer previews. Now, if we come over to the toolbar, 
in particular with the magnifying glass, when you wanted to zoom in or out, you would click the plus or the minus and zoom in or out at a certain percentage. Um, if we come up to the property bar up on the top here, these sliders were quite tiny. There's a tiny little circle, so it's, it could be hard for some people to get in there and actually use the sliders, so we've updated that. In addition to adding a, a bunch of extra options on the property bar for the tools that you select. So that's just a, a quick rundown. Um, with the photo painting panel, we still have this, but we have some additional amazing things that you can do in there. So let's go ahead and close out of Essential 6, and we will come over to 7. And the first thing that would open up, if it's the first time that you're launching Essentials, and actually every time you launch, is the welcome screen. And this is a great jumping off point. Whether you want to set up new documents, choose a layout that's appropriate for your setup. I'm on a laptop. If you were working on a two-in-one, you can select right or left-handed mode. We have all kinds of video tutorials for you guys. So if you want a, a quick peek into what's new, we have videos for that. We also have more in-depth tutorials that um, many of our painter masters have created. And finally, you can always get more. And get more is where you find the additional brush packs and or complementary software that um, might help once you've exported your painting. If you want to do something extra, like animate it with Photo Mirage, we point these out in here for you. And then finally, on the bottom, you can always go to our Learning Center and get all the tutorials and tips that you want to, or pop out to any of these other options, social, Instagram, sign up for webinars. Our webinars are always free. So I'll go ahead and close out of the welcome screen. And if we just take a look at the UI here, and I just realized I forgot to show you something in Essential 6, but I'll just show it to you in 7. So with the toolbar, we've got the dark skin. All of the icons have been enlarged, and they're nice and crisp and clear. You have that beautiful purple highlight, so that it's very evident what tool you have selected. Um, so it's very easy to see things in Painter Essential 7. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up an image. So we'll come up to the file menu here, and we'll just pop out and grab a photo to bring in. And if I come back over to the toolbar and grab the magnifier, here is the new Scrubby Zoom. This is so nice, and I use this constantly. Rather than having to click on the you know, zoom in or zoom out magnifying glass, now you can adjust just with your hand the zoom level by clicking and dragging right or left. And while I'm doing that, um, I don't think I mentioned the fact that I'm using a Wacom Intuos Pro drawing tablet. I recommend that anyone that is going to paint in Essentials has a drawing tablet um, because it's, it makes your tools much more realistic. If you want to splay your bristles or catch a paper grain because you're pressing lightly, and you'll see all that while I'm painting here today. So with the, the color wheel, which by default it was over here, you can move it wherever you might like to. If you come to a corner of the wheel and you see the crosshair, you can expand the color wheel to make it larger or shrink it down. So it really depends on um, you know, your workflow, if you want a big color wheel or a small one. And we also have a new menu. So from here, you could say use clone color, and this comes into play if you are painting from a photo. Swap colors. If you take a look over in the toolbar at the very bottom, we have our main and additional color, and you can quickly swap between the two. So let's say you were creating a painting where there were two colors that you knew you were going to use quite often. You could set those up, and then you can easily swap between the colors right from the color wheel. Plus, if I'm mixing up, if I'm in the center here with the saturation and value, see how I have a split preview? So as I'm adjusting that or changing the hue on the outside, it is, I'll make that darker so you can see a little bit better, you see the before and after split preview now, and that's new as well, and larger handles. So just trying to make everything easy for you to work your way around the UI. So let's go ahead and do our first photo painting, and I'm going to come to the photo painting panel. We already opened our image from the file menu. But what I need to tell Essentials is, hey, I want to use this image to paint from. 
and we'll just say, okay, I must have modified it a little bit. We'll go ahead and save that. And now it's showing me the image in the preview window, but there's nothing on the canvas. So what has happened is it's created a new document, and we have something called tracing paper that we can turn on. If I move this all the way to the left, so I'm all the way down on the bottom of the photo painting panel here. If you move the opacity slider to the left, you see the full photo. If you move it to the right, you can adjust the level of opacity. And for those of you who are more experienced with photo art, you could use this as a guide to trace from or to even paint from. So that's the purpose of the tracing paper. When we are going to use a style, we don't need to see the paint or the original photo. In fact, I don't like to have the tracing paper on because it interferes with my view of how the painting is building out. Now, when we open up these styles, all the way on the top, we have our eight distinctive artificial intelligence styles. Underneath that, you have our traditional painter essentials painting styles. So we're going to stick on the top here. And because I have a still life, I found that the Van Gogh works really nicely for both still lifes and landscape paintings. I click the Start button once I select the style. And what's happening is, and the first time you do this, it might take a little bit longer than the rest of the times because it's preparing the AI style. And then it's going to combine that with Painter's unique brush technology to create an extremely distinctive look. So we have a style combined with natural media strokes from Painter that are like nothing else. So there we have it, just a couple seconds. It paints the image out for me. And now it shows me the style preview over here. So once, you're, once it's done painting, it automatically puts you into the photo painting brushes category and it gives you the soft cloner. So for those of you that may not have done this before, when you're working with AI, when I'm using the soft cloner, this is going to bring back the AI style. So not the original image, but the AI style that was transferred to the photo. So I can maybe enhance a couple edges here if I want to. I actually think this looks pretty good to begin with and doesn't really require too much work. So that's our first AI painting. Let's go ahead and close out of this. And I'm going to open up and create a new canvas. And this is what I forgot to show you in Essential 6, is anywhere where you're going to select color throughout Painter Essentials, we now have the standard color wheel inside of the dialog boxes. So just like the color wheel that we've been working with um, that floats in the UI, you've got the updated handles, the split preview, you've got these color ramps, which you did not have in Essential 6, and you also have swatches. So in 6, you just had swatches and kind of a rainbow um, color selector. And I'm going to leave the color on white. We'll go ahead and close this out. And you can always select a paper texture from here as well when you're setting up a new canvas. All right, so we've got our canvas. I told you I use this scrubby zoom all the time. And I'll go ahead and zoom in here. And um, I'm just going to take a break, Jenny, and just see if so far we have any questions or if I'm good to keep going on. Hi, Tanya. Um, we have quite a few attendees, but I actually don't see any questions. OK. All right. Well, mm -hmm. if you have them, guys, go ahead and log them, and we'll take care of them <laughs> as we go along. I'll keep taking breaks. All right, so we are going to come in the toolbar, and anytime you see a little triangle in the corner, that means it's a flyout menu. I'm going to grab the kaleidoscope tool, and this is really great for creating mandalas. And up on the property bar here, when I come to the slider, you can see how nice and big this is. So we start off with three segments, but you can go all the way up to 12. So I just slide over to the right, I get 12 segments. Um, replicated down on the canvas here. You can change the plain color. If you had a colored canvas and you needed, you wanted to be able to see your segments, you can adjust that. Uh, what we're going to do now is come up to the brush selector. And you can always expand the selector out. If you come to the bottom and you see you get the arrow, you can click and drag so that you can have a larger preview of your brushes. And right off the bat, what you're going to see is brush previews are much nicer. They're inline. You don't have to hover. 
you see what you're going to get just by at a glance here. So the digital watercolor, although we have not enhanced the brushes themselves, we have added a new capability and a few different options for how to control how the paint is going to soak into the canvas. So I'm going to mix up a color, and you can size your brush up on the property bar, control option, or command alt. I can do it right on the canvas here. And before I begin to paint, I just want to point out in your preferences, Every one of you should always go to brush tracking before you begin painting. And what this allows you to do is to give essentials a sample of your touch. So if I do a light to harder stroke, you know, and right now I might be really excited, so I might be pressing harder on my stylus than usual, that's going to globally adjust painter for my level of pressure right now. You can also apply it to individual brush variants. So if I click this box right here, it will apply that pressure to the broad water digital watercolor brush. Okay, so now let's just have a little fun. I'm gonna press light. I'm gonna grab a different color here, maybe a blue. And what we're going to see is if I press really lightly, I get a very light wash of color. If I press down harder, it's going to fill the color or soak it into the canvas a little bit more. Um, and I'm not, uh, everything I'm doing here today is I'm kind of having fun. I'm going to show you how to use the tools in a way that's going to be effective for you. But for me, I'm just going to have some fun out on the canvas. Um, so I've applied some strokes out here. And if we take a peek up on the property bar, there's a little droplet. And the very first number one says, set diffusion. So with the brush that I have selected right now, I don't see a whole lot of fringe on the edge of the stroke. So what might happen if I take the diffusion all the way to the right? And you can see a tooltip, it's a visual preview right here that'll show you what these are going to do before you actually change the setting. So let's get a purple color. And now when I release the stylus from the canvas, it's diffusing the paint out. So you can make that adjustment if you like. You can also adjust your wet fringe. So if we now come and bump this one all the way over to the right, you can see the strokes that were on the canvas there. Now see how the paint has pooled at the edge of those strokes. So that is what the fringe is. It's kind of pooling the paint in certain areas. And any strokes that I add from this point on with this brush is going to pool the paint for me. All right, now there's one more option. And if I come here and I want to dry my paint, you can now do that. Previously in Essential 6, you couldn't dry the paint. And what that meant really is that the paint that's already on the canvas would not interact with any other media type um, that might allow you to do things like blend paint right on the canvas. So if I go to acrylics and oils and a clumpy brush, and we select a another color here. I, I'm having a hard time deciding on colors today. Let's just go with a, a pink. And I dip my brush into the center, so I'm going to shrink this down a little bit. What's going to happen with this brush is it loads it up with a finite amount of paint, and then it actually runs out of paint. But because I dried the digital watercolor, as I'm running the brush through the existing watercolor, it's letting me blend and mix with that paint that was already on the canvas. If I lift the stylus up again, and now I come, you know, I'm in the top left corner here, it's going to load the brush up with paint again and allow me to do the same thing. So this is a really um, productive new feature that's going to allow you a lot more flexibility with your digital watercolors. And there we have our mandala. Go ahead and close out of this. And um, we're going to go back and do a little bit more of our auto painting. So over to the photo painting panel, and I'm going to browse out to select an image to work with here. So let's take a look. Go ahead and open up this image of the woman and her puppy. And if we want to take a look, so here's what the original image looks like. You can actually combine more than one artificial intelligence style together. So to begin with, we just ran one. I'm going to turn the tracing paper off. And if we take a look in the drop-down menu here, uh, let's see. 
I am going to try out the AI Colorful Dab. And before I do this, when you want to combine an artificial intelligence style with another style, you need to first select a style that completely fills the canvas with paint. So the ones that do are smooth acrylic, the watercolor portrait, colorful dab, Van Gogh. Skip over colored pencil because that doesn't fill the entire canvas. Bold watercolor and AI impressionist. Then, once you apply those on top, we can do a charcoal or a colored pencil painting. So let's go ahead, click the start button here, let it prepare the style and analyze our beautiful brush strokes that it's going to place out on the canvas there. And if you take a look at the um, app icon on the bottom of my tray, you know it's painting when you see the green flashing across the app icon. Once it's done, obviously you won't see the strokes getting smaller and transforming and bringing in more detail. But once that thing quits flowing, the painting is done. Okay, now we already showed you how you can then come and use the soft cloner, and this is bringing the style back in. So if I wanted to focus on this dog here, kind of highlight a little bit more of him, I can quickly run over this with the soft cloner. But what I want to do is to actually combine more than one style together. So let's come in here, and I told you that you can use either the charcoal drawing or the colored pencil. I'm gonna choose colored pencil. And then I'm gonna click the start button. And this is gonna happen very fast because I'm gonna click start and then I'm gonna click the canvas to stop the painting. So I'm not even gonna let it paint the canvas at all. So click start, let it prepare. And I click the canvas and see in the image window, now I've got the colored pencil style there. So some fun things that you could do, and this is more of a whimsical, you know, kind of cartoony thing. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and use my soft cloner to bring back the colored pencil style. So what we're going to do is mix colored pencils with, you know, an acrylic painting, give it just kind of a fun, cool look. So maybe I'll just do the whole chair. And because I'm erasing down to, I'm using the soft cloner which actually you know, brings back the style that you have selected. Now, I could even size the brush up if I was smart <laughs> so that you don't have to watch me painting, painting, painting. Okay, and maybe come up here. We can size it down a bit. Now, if you're struggling to kind of figure out, well, exactly how do I stay in the lines? Um, you know, I, I want to see the original image. Always remember, you can turn the tracing paper on adjust the opacity level, and now this is kind of combining our painting with the original so that I have a better idea of where I want to place my stroke. All right, so if I just want to bring in the chair, if I go out of the lines a little bit, I'm not going to worry. This is just to give you guys an idea of the kind of stuff that you can do on your own when you have more time than just the, the short webinar that we have here today to paint. All right. So let's maybe get the first strap since that's hanging over the chair as well, and we'll turn the tracing paper off, and here we have it. Okay, so a fun way to combine two different styles together. So Jenny, before I move on, just do a quick check-in to see if we have any questions. Um, hey Tanya, I cannot see any questions, and um, I'm not sure if there are questions coming in because I don't see anything. Okay, well, I guess that means that there are not any questions. So either I'm answering all the questions or <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> so guys, don't be shy. If you have questions, please put them in the questions panel. All right, uh, I guess I'll just keep going on then, Jenny. Okay, so let's go ahead and close Hello. out of our image here. And I'm gonna browse out and open another one because I'll show you another way to combine styles but with more flexibility. Because the last image, we were painting everything direct to canvas. So it was just one layer, the canvas, and all the strokes were on top of each other. So I couldn't control the different styles separately. So if we now come to the drop down here, 
This time, I'm going to choose bold watercolor. Go ahead and select this. And if you want to see the original image, that's what the image looks like. Go ahead and click the Start button. And by default, it's always going to paint the first style on the canvas. And I have not opened up the Layers panel yet for you, but I will do that in just a second. And the layers show up right on the bottom of the Photo Painting panel. So this bold watercolor applies a very distinct color style, as well as bringing in um, the watercolor strokes. And the Van Gogh did that as well. It gave that kind of bluish tint that some of Van Gogh's paintings have. All right, so here is my watercolor. And let's take a look in the layers. Now, one thing you couldn't do in Essential 6 was to lock down your canvas layer. You can do that in 7 if you would like to. You can add a layer. It's right next to the lock here. I'm going to go ahead and add an additional layer. And just quickly, I'm going to make a mistake to show you what might happen if you forget to do something. So I'm going to come up here, and this time I want a charcoal drawing. And I'm going to click to start the painting. And something funky is going to happen here. So it's painting these white strokes. This is not what we want, OK? And the reason it's doing this is because I chose to paint the style on a layer. I need to set the composite method to gel so that it actually makes um, this transparent so that we can see through to the layer below. Now we see our strokes are now coming in in black there. So I'm just going to select everything that was on the canvas. And we have already have our layer mode set to gel. Now when I click to start the painting, I'm going to stop this before it's completely finished. Now, sometimes I like to do this because I don't want the entire canvas filled with the media type that I have selected. You stop just by clicking on the canvas. And because we've separated these on layers, now if I wanted to eliminate a little bit of the charcoal that was painted in here, I can come to the eraser and I can begin to erase away. OK, so I can get rid of some of the strokes. You can't do that if you're painting everything on one layer. You can also come and make adjustments to the opacity. So if you wanted the style to be a bit more subtle, as long as you have it on a layer, you have that control. You could also come and start using merge modes and do all kinds of funky things. So it's a great way to paint if you want more flexibility with your styles. Now, if I want to finish this painting off by adding some effects, I'm going to want to drop this layer down to the canvas. So I can either collapse or drop. Um, we only have two layers. So I'll just say, let's drop. And let's come up to the Effects menu, go to Surface Control, and apply Surface Texture. So if you're rushed for time, or if you just really love the AI styles, but you want to add a little something extra to it, effects are a nice way to do this quickly and easily. Now this looks, this is way too much of an amount of texture, but we can come in here, we can change the paper texture. Okay, so maybe select a different style. I can adjust the amount, make it a little more subtle. Another thing that I want to point out here is you would not want to apply a texture if you're going to print on textured paper. Um, probably obvious to everybody, but I would only do this if I was going to post this, let's say, in social online to show off to my friends. All right, so we've got a texture. Then you could also do things like apply lighting. All right, and there's all different kinds of presets. So much like our styles for painting, we also have presets that we can apply to our lighting. So maybe I'll do slide. You still have control. You can come and you can move the light source, I could brighten things up if I wanted to. So if I want the sun to look like it's kind of coming up over the left-hand side here, maybe throw a little bit more distance. So you can adjust all of these to your heart's desire. Uh, so there it is with lighting. If I undo the lighting, you know, personal preference, depends on what you want, redo the lighting. Um, so there we go. And that's just another way to work with our AI style. So let's go ahead and close out of this. And we're going to grab this beautiful model. And you know what? I'm going to close that out because I actually want to make a modification to the image before I paint it. 
So I've got my model here, who I just put a little pink dot on her face. So you have 32 levels of undo. You can set those to more if you want to. Command or Control Z lets you undo. Um, the more levels of undo that you set, the more that you're going to be asking a painter. So just a little tip there. And you can set all of that in your preferences. All right, so let's see. I want to add a little something extra to the model. And we have added some extra image hose nozzles. And this might be a nice thing to try and use on the model. So I'm going to come to the FX category, grab my color hose jitter. There's three different variants that you have for your image hoses. And I'll show you each one of these. So if we start with the color hose jitter, it does, as the name implies, it jitters the color of the nozzle itself. If we select the second one, linear size, as I adjust my pressure on the tablet from very light to very hard, it's going to go from small to big. And then the final variant is the spray size. So this will incorporate both the size of the nozzle and also the spread of those, the scattering of the leaves. Okay, so now that you understand how those work, um, what's new is that we have a whole bunch of nozzles to work with. So if I come up here, up on the property bar, I'm going to expand my painter nozzles. And on the very top, I see passion flower. I love gardenias. So maybe we'll put a flower in her hair and go ahead and grab the gardenias. And I do want to work with the linear size. Now, this might take a little bit of experimentation for me to make sure I get the right size. And the nozzles have a bunch of different flower types in them. So I am just going to tap down once, and I need more pressure, OK? So the harder I press, the larger the flower will be. And I think I'll go ahead and leave that flower in our hair right there. And it doesn't look entirely natural right now. But the nice thing is that we can paint over this. So I'm going to go ahead and save. Let's call her the model flower. I could have saved it as a risk, which is Painter's native file format. We'll just stick with JPEG right now. And in order to paint this, I need to use the open image, the image that was already open. I'm going to click the Use the Open Image button. And this time, I'm going to do a colored pencil painting. So it'll go ahead and do its thing once again. And once it's done, um, what I find sometimes with these styles, they might add some content in the background that I might not want. So I can quickly erase or eliminate that content. I can also hand paint and make some modifications to the auto paint. Um, and I'll show you how to do that. So the flexibility with Essentials is that we can start with an auto painting, but then we can go and grab our own brushes, and we can begin to do our create our own version of the painting. So I think GoToMeeting is uh, messing with me a little bit here because it's taking longer than it usually does. But I'm going to let this build out a little bit more. And then I'll show you how to erase the background. And then I'm going to go into some of our other new brush categories, things like the dab stencils that are really, really fun. We're painting with a the colored pencil right now, which is a very textured style. So if I wanted to create my own custom background for my model, dab stencils probably be the perfect category for me to work with. And in case you haven't seen, um, Skip Allen created a, a great dab stencil tutorial where he's also working from an image. OK, so I think um, this is looking pretty good here. I'm going to go ahead and tap on the canvas. And we're going to go ahead and grab the eraser tool. And you could either create selections. You could work with the selections tools. I kind of like just to erase. So I'll get everything that's really close to our face here so that I can be a little more exact. And then I'll size the brush up, and we'll just get rid of this background. So I grab the eraser right from the toolbar. 
We don't have any eraser category, so you just need to go to the toolbar, grab the eraser, and go ahead and eliminate the background here. And I'm also going to show you something else that I haven't done yet. Let's just make sure we got everything that's under the panel there. And we'll come over here and erase this side. Okay, so once we're done with this, I'm going to do a little touching up on her face and on her shoulder where um, the style might have added some elements that, that I might want to get rid of. So knowing that we have a colored pencil painting here, um, instead of me going to use a colored pencil, I don't want to have to hand paint in each stroke. So I'm going to go to my chalk pastel and crayons, and I'm going to grab a square hard pastel. And working from the image, I'm going to sample colors from the image here. So in order to do that, by default, the clone color, paint with the, the colors from the style is turned on. You can turn that off right from the menu here, or you can come over to the panel and click to turn off clone color. And now what you can do is I'm pressing the Option or Alt key, depending upon your platform, and you can sample colors from the image. So let's grab a different type of texture. And I'm just going to kind of lightly brush in. And I'm going to go back and forth between using a light color and then sampling some of the um, more purpley, pinky colors from the image just to get rid of, it kind of looks like veins that the style brought in. So I just want to minimize those a little bit. And it doesn't take too much. And because I chose a texture that works nicely with the style that I selected, this is actually coming along quite nicely here. So let's come to the bottom. Okay, so hopefully you guys get the idea. You can choose any brush in all of Essentials to paint with over the top of your AI style. All right, so we've got that. She is on the canvas right now. I'm going to do a select all and float the entire painting up to a layer. And remember, when we want to be able to see through our charcoal or colored pencil down to the canvas, I'm going to set it to gel. And now we're going to take a look at the dab stencils. So if I come over to the brush selector and I grab my dab stencils, these brushes are extremely expressive based on textures. And there's two different types. You see some of the variants say flow map and some say paper. So let's grab maybe the very top one. And these are new to Essential 7 is a whole library of flow map textures. And these are just another type of texture that you have in Painter Pro that we've now brought into Essentials. So we can grab a bunch of wacky and wild um, texture styles if I wanted to keep things consistent and paint with a color from within the image. You can do your sampling right from there. I might darken that up a little bit. Press the B key, and I get my brush back. So let's just take a look at how these work. Now you can see, you can actually see the direction that um, I'm moving my stylus. And I'm going to press lightly. It's going to catch the ridges. I'm going to press down hard. It's going to fill in the grooves of the texture. So it's entirely based on pressure, how the appearance of your texture is going to look within your painting. Okay, so this one, really hard pressure, brings that texture in a whole ton. The flow mat burst, this is a cool one. Um, <laughs> It's got a lot going on in the brush tip, but it still is incorporating that texture as well. All right, and then the bottom options are going to work more with the flow, or sorry, the paper textures. So it gets rid of the flow map and it gives you the paper textures, and then you can start painting with those. All right, so let's create our own background. I'm going to go back up to the chalk, which matches the style that I already have going on here. We've already created our color, and around her face, I'm just going to brush really lightly. And this brush is really big, so if I want to get in between right here, I'm going to need to size the brush down a tad. And it's, I like to size the brush on the fly rather than going up to the property bar, so maybe we'll, just by using the pressure, kind of darken it as we get further off to the right here. 
All right, so here's adding your own custom background, you know, create a little drama and intensity <laughs> in my painting here. And I can come over here and lightly brush in. I'm not going to be too careful. A little bit of this, if I go too far into her, you're going to see the texture underneath the model herself. So that's just another way to take an AI painting and accentuate it. All right, so Jenny, why don't I see if any questions have come in? Tanya, I have a feeling GoToWebinar is acting up again, and uh, I'm not getting any questions myself. So if you are getting the questions, I guess we can address them later. OK, let me just take a peek here. Um, all right, guys, I don't know why you can't see any questions. Let's see. Yeah, now it's acting up for me. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Um, gosh, I really apologize, guys, but it does seem we're having an issue with the panel here. Um, so what I'm going to suggest is that after the webinar, I'll personally follow up with the questions, and I can send the answers to your email. Sorry that we're having, sometimes go to meeting plays tricks on us, like we said. Um, so before I close out of this model, I'm just going to do a little sample of her skin color here. And we'll close out of this. And I'm going to open up another image. And I want to make sure that I get through everything. So we have about 15 minutes left here. I have a couple more things to show you all. Um, so with this image, Let's come back to our photo painting panel. And this time, I'm going to create a charcoal drawing. But I need to remember to say, use the open image. We'll go ahead and start this painting up. And I'm probably going to stop the charcoal before it's completely finished. And you'll kind of learn what you like as you're experimenting with the different styles. And today, I'm not using any of our standard styles that show up at the bottom, but you can certainly use those and apply any of the techniques that I'm showing you here today to those as well. OK, so I'm going to click. And I know that looks a little bit funky, but not to worry. We'll go ahead and zoom in here. And I'm going to grab my <clears throat> soft cloner brush, and we'll just bring in little bit of the original style. So what I'd like to just very briefly and quickly show you is that we've also added in glazing brushes. And these glazing brushes are really great if you have something like a pencil sketch or a pen and ink, um, if you want to do some rendering of color underneath that sketch or pen layer. So in this case, we just quickly did a real quick um, charcoal. And it's on the canvas. So I'm going to select all, select float, pop that up on the layer. And what are we going to do? We're going to set gel. <laughs> so we've got that. And now we're going to go to the glazing brushes. So let's zoom in on our face a little bit here, and maybe the top right-hand corner. And I don't want to use the clone color. So let's select the brush that we want to use. If I go to glazing, there's all kinds of really beautiful brushes in here. And what these brushes allow you to do is to basically, with your own touch, build up subtle washes of color where it almost looks like a gradient. So if I come to the top right-hand corner, if I'm pressing really light with this cloud brush, this is, as the name implies, probably really great if you're painting clouds. Or subtle washes of something on right here. We've got a leaf. So if I press down hard, I can apply more of the paint. But it's a very natural look of how you can progress from light to dark using these brushes. And we have all different types of variants that you can work with. So um, I'm just going to do you know, a couple little washes of color. I'm not going to paint this whole thing. I just want to show you how they work. So if I wanted to go from dark to a little bit lighter, more pressure, and then lighten it up as I'm moving towards the left here. 
Okay, so that's the cloud brush. Now, if you want to paint something like um, skin or, you know, an area where it requires a soft touch, you could use the flat or you could use the soft brush. And I had sampled a skin color, so I'm not the greatest at a <laughs> blank canvas painting, guys. So I'll go ahead and just apply, mix up my own color and apply a subtle wash of color over her face. And as I press harder, and my brush is a little bit big, I probably could size it down just a tad, but if we come down here, and as I press harder, it's gonna be darker, or I can lighten it up, so under her chin, it would be darker. I think you guys probably get the idea. So all of these brushes make easy work of gently and subtly applying color to your images. If we wanted to put a little wash of color on our cheek. And there are brushes that are subtle, like soft brush, and then there are some that actually uh, have pretty intense looks to their style. So if I select a particle first, Okay, so that's going to give me a pretty extreme style. But once again, if I press lightly and then down hard, it can still look subtle. And we could go back and grab something like a constructing brush and start filling in color. Okay, so these are the new glazing brushes. Justin Buse created a tutorial on how to use these and probably goes into more depth than the amount of time that I have here to show you today. But those are the glazing brushes. So let's go ahead and close out of this. And I have one final painting that I would like to create. So let's browse out. And this time I'm going to grab maybe a pop this painting in my kitchen when I'm done. I have a bunch of pairs. So let's take a look at what these look like. And we'll turn the tracing paper off. And this time, yes, again, I'm going to use an AI style. So let's start with the AI Impressionist. And I'm just going to go ahead and start that painting. And from here, we're going to do a little bit more of hand painting. And actually, I'm using the AI style and this painting to get some paint out on that canvas. But from there, we can come in and fine tune and use other brushes and kind of give it our own personalized look. So let's see, let's zoom in. So with this style, Impressionist, um, it's a very subtle color palette. It's light and airy. Um, we could also make adjustments to this once we're done with the painting, and I might choose to do so. And this is another case where I might want to show my tracing paper just so I can see where I want to dip my brush in to kind of fine tune certain areas. All right, so let's turn that off. And I'm going to just lightly brush around the edges of some of the fruit here to bring those edges out. And then we're going to choose some other brushes to paint with. In addition to the dab stencils and the glazing and the enhancements to the digital watercolor, uh, we also have dynamic speckles. So if you haven't tried those out yet, they're a lot of fun and they're very, they're luscious, natural media looking types of brushes. All right, so let's come up to the brush selector and I'm gonna go to dynamic speckles and there's all different types. And to really show you what these are about, I'm just gonna quickly open up a new canvas here and We'll take a look at the brushes before we start to apply them to our painting. So back to the brush selector and dynamic speckles. The first one is the flow jet. Now with these brushes, they're comprised of tiny little dots um, that can either look like spurts of paint or they can look like hairs. So first we have the flow jet. And um, once again, because I've got my Wacom tablet here, I'm kind of pointing my stylus up. And as I move across the canvas, this is changing both the color. It's, it's actually changing the color within the stroke. And depending upon how I flip my brush around, we can get wacky and wild with this. Up on the very top, on the property bar, this is where you can adjust the speckle size. So we can have minimal number of speckles or a whole bunch. 
And depending upon the brush variant that you have selected, these are going to have a very different look as you start adjusting the speckles. So now we've got a hard bristle brush. And this brush loads up with paint. It runs out just like that acrylic clumpy brush, but you really see the hairs on the brush. If we come into the speckle size and I bump it all the way to the right, what you're going to see is a much clumpier brush. If I'm using light pressure, I can still get the hairs, but as I press down harder, it kind of clumps and fattens those bristles up. And then if we take them all the way down to the left, then you're going to have a sparse hairy brush. So if you wanted to hand paint hair, if you had a photo and you wanted to add some more strands in, this would be a really great brush to work with. Um, so all of these are adjustable. And we've got some particles. And the particles are really fun. OK, so this one, very expressive based on how I twist and turn. Then there's some that actually have a mind of their own. So I'm just tapping and holding on the canvas. I'm not even moving my stylus. And it's creating these really wonderful patterns and styles all on its own. So even if you had a mouse, which I don't recommend, um, this brush will do all kinds of fun things for you. And there's a spongy brush. OK, so I think you guys kind of get the idea of how these brushes work and that you can adjust their speckle size to adjust them for the painting at hand. So let's go ahead and close out and come back over to our AI. And I'm going to start with the Flow Spray Blender. Now, this brush needs paint on the canvas to start with. It's called the blender. And that's what the blenders do. You can dip the brush into existing paint. And it will work with the paint that's already on the canvas and allow you to blend it. So if I wanted to come, and now if I press really hard, I can kind of spurt some of the um, jets up into the hairs there. If I went too far, we can always soft clone back in parts of the image. Let's come back, and I'm going to use the hard bristle. So if I wanted to paint hair over here on the left, OK, so remember I made that a really sparse, hairy bristle. And that's not enough hairs for me. So I'm going to come up and adjust the speckles, bring those up. And just dipping my brush into the existing paint, but using a completely different brush variant gives this a very different look. And you can do this so quickly and easily. So I find it's, it's nice to get some paint out on the canvas. And then you can come in and start playing with different brushes to create different looks. OK, so we've got that. Let's see. Let's come back up. And maybe I'll go to the particle bristle. And so this pair in the center here. Now, this is that brush that was really expressive based on how you kind of flick your wrist and your stylus movement. OK, so we can come in and begin to paint. This pair. So this is all just to demonstrate that the world is your oyster in Painter Essentials. You can choose any media that you want in all of Essentials. And as long as you have turned on Use Clone Color, it will always paint with the colors from the image. So what if we stray into another category? If I go to Artists and the Sargent brush, this is actually one of the most loved brushes in both painter and essentials. It's very juicy, <laughs> if that's appropriate to say. I am working with pears. Um, so this really mixes and blends the colors that we have. And depending upon the amount of pressure that you place on the tablet, you can get a real skinny stroke. Or if I press down harder, it's going to give me you know, a thick, more blendy stroke. The smaller your brush, the less each, or sorry, the more detail it's going to bring in. And the larger the brush, the less detail it's going to bring in. So those are all tips with, you know, once you really start painting with the brushes. Now, once I had paint down here, I could also go into the blenders. And the blenders, remember, just work with the existing paint that's already on the canvas. So this is a coarse 
oily blender that if I wanted to, you know, do a little bit better job of blending these colors together, or maybe I actually like the bold stroke. All right, so let's go ahead and zoom out just a little bit. And I'm just going to leave the background because we're, we're at the top of the hour here. I probably would, I would have painted stems as well, but I think we're okay. Now if I come to the effects menu, tonal control, we could adjust colors. So because that was so subtle, maybe I want to bump the colors up. Or I could individually mix the different color channels. There's all kinds of options. Um, and to finish off our webinar here today, I'm going to go ahead to apply surface texture again. But I'm not going to use the paper. I can use image luminance. And check that out. So what this does is it gives an impasto type look to your strokes, and you can always adjust the amount right here. So with that, I think that I have covered everything that I wanted to show you guys here today that's new in Painter Essentials, and I greatly apologize that we couldn't answer your questions as we go, but I promise you that no, I don't want to do that. What am I painting with? Let's see. Oh, I'm painting with the clone colors. That's why. Um, so I will be sure to take a look at all of your questions following the webinar today. And I will personally email you with answers to what we couldn't answer. This is also recorded. So we'll have this up on the YouTube channel by tomorrow morning for you. And you'll receive a link to the recording. So Jenny. I don't know if miraculously any of the questions came through. No, they did not, Tanya, unfortunately. Um, like you said, we'll just have to address them later. OK. Well, thanks for <clears throat> being my woman today, regardless. And I hope you all enjoyed this. And um, we post new webinars in Discovery Center, in our Learning Center. So if you want to see what's up and coming, you can always check there. Other than that, I hope you all have a great day. And thanks so much for joining us today. Take care.